Only in professional wrestling could you watch a man thumb his brother going deep down his brother's throat while his other brother and cousin watch on. Well, in professional wrestling and on certain websites that I know absolutely nothing about. And then air and 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 the blood line explodes in Wilkes Bear. Oh my goodness, Roman, what is he doing? He's got solo on his side. I don't know what I'm on about. I'm John Rectum with my review WWE SmackDown, and yes, from Wilkes Barrel. Pennsylvania, almost said North Carolina for some goddamn reason. I don't really know a lot about these weirdly named towns, but yet, at the Mohegan Sun, one of the Mohegan Suns, seriously, so many goddamn locations blend together, but nevertheless, the bloodline explodes more. Yeah, that was pretty much about it for the show, but nevertheless, let me know your thoughts on this show in the comments, please. 1,000 days of Roman tomorrow belongs to him. Hoorah! So, yeah, um... Colin Barrett, they pitch to Roman's package. Roman's prominently protruding package. I called the video that, but I think I'd probably get in trouble. And they even showed CM Punk, CM Punk, but they cut the Usos out. Ooh, he's still mad at his cousins. Hmm. Big fight feel, and they show a lot of clips like of Edge and Daniel Bryan. Now Bryan Danielson once again at Mania 37. <laughs> and like Mania 38, and so many other clips and everything. I mean, I'm not going to go over every single one of them. Theory comes out to cut a promo, and then Pretty Deadly put him over. And then the Darling Brutes, Seamus, Peter Dune, and Ridge Holland took on Theory and Pretty Deadly. I have come to the conclusion that I despise Pretty Deadly and refuse to watch anything they do because they've annoyed me since they've come over to the U.S. version of NXT, and nothing they've done on the main roster has Swayed my opinion. Can they work? Sure. But they're goofs. I don't like them. And I don't like Theory. He's boring. This match was given a lot of time. Now the crowd was into it. The work was fine. <laughs> we got two breaks. And then Theory covers one of the guys. I can't remember if it was Peter Doon or Ridge. Because I really didn't care. If the crowd was into it, I'll give them that much credit. Then uh, we get recaps of the Bloodline drama at Night of Champions. Heyman tells Solo, the Usos won't be here tonight. They're going to be there tonight because they kind of have to be. Kind of have to be. It's kind of how that works. So the OC are still a thing. Why is Top Dollar employed? Genuine question. Why is Hit Row... Adonis... Ashante Diodonk, you can get something out of. You cannot get anything out of BFAB, a.k.a. not Jade. I'm just going to do that because why not have the nerdy crack voice... From the sense of, this comes out of my paycheck. If I had a girlfriend, she'd kill me. Anyway, so yeah, that shout out to one of my friends in Texas that's going to absolutely love that. The Good Brothers, home of the Good Brothers, may we take your order. They're not actually called the Good Brothers. I don't care. They took on Hit Row. Why are Hit Row still here? I don't want people to not have an income, but they don't deserve to be here. They're not good. Anyway, why would anybody care about this match? Magic Killer, one, two, three. <laughs> Top Dollar then tries to lay out both Good Brothers, stupidly, and then get lays out by the Phenomenal Forum from AJ Styles. It's his birthday, so why don't you pick up the phone? Good old Happy Death Day right there. Anyway, Pierce says the Usos won't be here. He's doubled the security. A lot of fucking good that did later on. And we're getting Priest versus Rollins on Raw. The Grayson Waller effect with Asuka. The crowd does not care about Grayson. They have not been given a reason to care about Grayson. Show him beating up Gargano in front of Candace and the kid. That was hilarious. Stupid goddamn garden gnome thinking that he should be a professional wrestler. Okay, no, I'm sorry. I just, I, I... They're on Raw. I really shouldn't worry about that. Nevertheless, Asuka comes out yelling a lot and dripping mist. And I wish she'd yell at me and... Never mind, I'm just going to move on from that. Um, I wanted her to miss Waller just for comedic effect, even though <laughs> Waller did win me over with that Gargano feud. And then Io comes out, my my God, my God, Io looked great. They're yelling at each other in Japanese, I don't know what the fuck they were saying. Bailey comes out, and a certain individual that I interact with on Twitter was absolutely fine. You weren't. You know who you are, don't lie. Who's going to be Miss Money in the Bank? Well, it's not going to be Bailey because she won it already. Shotzi comes out. I like Shotzi, but I don't think that these scripted promos are her thing. Then Lacey shows up. Of course, she wants to shut up any minorities that are trying to speak up. Selena wants to shut up the briefcase, and she comes out and knocks Lacey, <laughs> who's in full-on gear regalia with cobras on her goddamn uh, hat. Cobra, retreat, retreat. 
and bring more girls. I love America. That was good, Grayson. That was very good. Bianca then attacks Asuka in the entranceway. And then Graham says he'll handle Corbin if he comes back to SmackDown. But Corbin's going to be competing against Mello. At, oh, God. That's... God damn. Oh, that, that's definitely going to be something. And Lacey decked uh, Zelina while, you know, they were in commercial. And unfortunately, Lacey did not beat Zelina. I think Lacey's getting released because they're apparently reportedly going to release some people soon. And I really think they do need to clean house with some people and let people go elsewhere and try to, because there are some people that are just stale as hell. And that goes for multiple companies. But anyway, Zelina beat her with the code red. Thank God. I didn't know they were allowing children to be in the Money in the Bank briefcase match, but nevertheless, <laughs> or compete for the Money in the Bank briefcase. The LWO are thrilled. Ray and Zelina are the same height, is what I noted. Ford and L.A. Knight, yeah, Ford was playing the heel here, and holy crap, L.A. Knight won with a roll-up and using the ropes. I fear that if he wins the briefcase, he will either fail his cash-in or win, you know, cash-in successfully and then be totally just destroyed as champion because he got over when they didn't want him to. But that was cool, Ford playing the heel there. They might go with Ford and Bianca as a heel couple at some point. There was a weird seance with weird language and everything and weird video stuff. And I don't know why they gave all this to Alba and Isla. And I like Alba and Isla. I would just need one chance. Or even if I was rich, I wouldn't have a shot. <clears throat> but I digress. In all honesty, I think they went a little overboard with the dramatic stuff. They're trying to feature them, but they haven't really featured them much in the ring. Um, this is a bit weird. In fact, this is a little bit too weird, but nevertheless, I mean, hey, they're giving him screen time, I guess. And Triple H enters. He's going to introduce a new championship to Roman, and he does after a commercial break. It's one big gold belt. <coughs> Acknowledge me, and then the Usos come here, and a lot of good that double security did. They, didn't, they weren't even coming out trying to stop him, and the Usos didn't even deck him. Nothing. Apparently, they laid out the security, they offered them donuts, or they gave them cyanide pills, possibly. Let's just go with that right there. It's Wilkes-Bear. I don't think it's really going to goddamn matter. And a face-to-face. -face. We go to break, by the way, and then we had the face-to-face. -face. And then <laughs> Jay gets told, kick him in the face. I'm telling you to fix this. Kick your brother in the face. And... This was good, but the dramatic line reading play stuff is kind of wearing on me. It They gave this good time. I think they gave this a little bit too much because there were a few too many pauses. I will not knock the fact that the effort was put into this. But, you know, the kick heard around the world or whatever. Around the world, around the world. And that, oh, Solo, he's going to betray you too. He's going to use you up and spit you out. And then Solo grabs the mic after Roman hands it to him and says, I acknowledge you, my tribal chief, but these are my brothers. And he stood by them, and the way he was staying, I go, he's going to spike Jimmy by the end of this. And he did. And that's really all I have to say about that, because I, I, I didn't mind this. Don't get me wrong, this is what everybody was waiting for. The thousand years of Roman. Tomorrow belongs to the tribal chief. But it took a bit to get there. Now, sure, the question is, what will Solo do? Will Jay fall in line like Roman says, or will we get Roman, will we get Jimmy? The one thing they don't need to do is assume that people are going to buy into either Jimmy or Jay beating Roman Reigns for the championship. Nobody is going to buy into that. I'm not saying that they shouldn't do the match. They need to come up with somebody, not Cody Rhodes, to beat Roman, because Cody ain't the guy either, even though some people think he is, but... Hey, I'll say this much. They did a good job at building this whole thing, and now we can see where the bloodline goes heading into Money in the Bank. Anyway, agree, disagree, what I said, like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rithlin. I'll see you soon.